Greetings, full of shalom. We are looking at the book of Kizion Avraham, or the Revelation of Avraham. Chapter 1. On the day I was guarding the Elohim of my father Terach, and the Elohim of my brother Nahor, while I was testing to find out which Elohim is in truth the strongest, I, then Avraham, or Avram, at the time when my lot came, when I was completing the service of my father Terak's sacrifice to his Elohim of wood, of stone, of gold, of silver, of copper, and iron, Having entered their temple for the service, I found an Elohim named mar Amuth, carved from stone, fallen at the feet of the iron Elohim, Nakim, N-A-K-H-I-N. And it came to pass that when I saw it in my heart, was perplexed, and I thought in my mind that I, Avram, could not put it back in its place alone, because it was heavy, being made of a big stone. But I went and told my father, and he went and came in with me, and when we both lifted it, to put it in its place, its head fell off, even while I was holding it by its head. And it came to pass, when my father saw the head of his Elohim Maramoth had fallen, he said to me, Avram, I, and I said, Hanani, here uh, I am. And he said unto me, Bring me the axes and the chisels from the house. And I brought them to him from the house, and he cut another maramuth from another stone without a head. And he smashed the head that had fallen off maramuth and the rest of maramuth. Chapter 2 he made five other Elohim, and he gave them to me, and ordered me to sell them outside the town road. I saddled my father's ass, and loaded them on it, and went out on the highway to sell them. And behold, merchants from Fandana of Aram were coming with camels on their way to Mitzrayim to buy Kok O'Neil from the Nile. I asked them a question, and they answered me. And walking along, I conversed with them. One of their camels screamed. The ass took fright and ran away and threw off the Elohim. Three of them were crushed, and two remained intact. And it came to pass that when the Aramim saw that I had Elohim, that they said to me, Why not you not tell us that you had idols, Elohim? We would have bought them before the ass heard the camel's voice, and you have had no, no loss. Give us at least the idols, the Elohim, that remain, and we will give you a suitable price. I considered in my heart, and they paid both for the smashed Elohim and the Elohim which remained. For I had been grieving in my heart how I would bring payment to my father. 
I threw three broken Elohim into the water of the river Gur, which was in this place, and they sank into the depths of the river Gur, and were no more. Chapter 3 As I was still walking on the road, my heart was disturbed and my mind distracted. And I said in my heart, my love, what is the inequality of activity which my father is doing? Is it not he rather who is Yah for his Elohim, because they came into being from his sculpting? his planning and his skill. They ought to honor my father because they are his work. What is this food of my father in his works? Behold, Marmuth fell and could not stand up in the sanctuary, nor could I myself lift him until my father came and we raised him him up, and even so we were not able to do it, and his head fell off of him, and he put it on another stone of another Elohim, which he had made without a head, and the other five Elohim, which got smashed in falling from the ass who could not save themselves and injure the ass because it smashed them. Nor did their shards come up out of the river. And I said to my heart, If it is so, how then can my father's Elohim Maramuth, which has a, the head of of another stone, and which is made from another stone, save a man. How could it save a man? Or hear a man's prayer? Or give him any gift? Chapter 4 And thinking thus, I came to my father's house, and I watered the ass and gave him hay. And I took out the silver and placed it in the hand of my father, Terach. And when he saw it, he was happy, glad, and he said, You are blessed, Avraham, by the Elohim of my Elohim, since you have brought me the price for the Elohim, so that my labor was not in vain. <laughs> and answering, I said to him, Shema, listen, Father Terach, the Elohim are blessing you because you are an Elohim for them, because you made them, for their blessing is their perdition and their power is vain. They did not help themselves. How can they help you or bless you or me? I was good for you in this transaction, for through my good sense I brought you silver for the smashed Elohim. And when he heard my speech, he became furiously angry with me because I had spoken harsh words against his Elohim. Chapter 5 But having pondered my father's anger, I went out, and afterward, when he had gone out, he called me, saying, Avram. And I said, uh, Hanani, here I am. And he said, Gather up wood chips, for I was making Elohim from fur, 
before you came and prepare them food for my midday meal. And it came to pass, then I was choosing the wooden chips. I found among them a small Elohim which would fit in my left hand an idol. On and on its forehead was written the Elohim bar is sat. And it came to pass when I put the chips on the fire in order to prepare the food for my father and going out to inquire about the food I put Barasat near the enkindling fire, saying to him threateningly, Barasat, watch that the fire does not go out before I come back. If the fire goes out, blow on it so it flares up. I went out and I made my, uh, made my counsel. When I returned, I found Barisat fallen on his back, his feet enveloped by the fire and burning fiercely. <laughs> and it came to pass, when I saw it, I laughed and said to myself, Barisat, truly, you know how to light a fire and cook food. And it came to pass. While saying this in my laughter, I saw that he burned up slowly from the fire and became ashes. I carried the food to my father to eat, and gave him wine and milk, and he drank, and he enjoyed himself, and he blessed Marmuth his Elohim. And I said to him, oh, Father Terak, do not bless Mahamuth your Elohim. Do not praise him. Praise rather Barisat uh, your Elohim, because as though loving you. Oh, he threw himself into the fire in order to cook your food. And he said to me, Then, there, then where is he now? And I said, He has burned in the fierceness of the fire and become dust. And he said, Great is the power of Barisat. I will make another today, and tomorrow he will prepare my food. <laughs> Chapter 6 When I, Avram, heard these words, like this for my father, I laughed in my mind, and I groaned in the bitterness and anger of my soul. <laughs> Righteous indignation. I came, and I, I said, How then is a figment of a body made by him an aid for my father? Or can he have subordinated his body to his soul, his soul to a ruach, and that ruach to stupidity and ignorance? And I said, It is only proper to endure evil that I may throw my mind to purity and I will expose my thoughts clearly to him. I answered and said, uh, Father Terach, whichever of these Elohims you extol, you err in your thoughts. Behold, the Elohim of my brother Nahor, standing in your holy sanctuary, are more valuable than yours. For behold, Zucaos, my brother Nahor's Elohim, is more valuable than your Elohim Maramuth, 
because he is made of gold, <laughs> valued by man. And if he grows old with time, he will be remolded, whereas Maramuth, that he is changed or broken, will not be renewed, because he is stone. What about Loav and the other Elohim who stand with Zucharas, Zu Chaos? For he is also more vulnerable, venerable than the Elohim Barasat. He is carved from wood and forged from silver, because he too is a turn of comparison, being valued by man according to the external experience. But Barasat, your Elohim, when he was still not carved, rooted in the earth, being great and wondrous with branches and flowers and praise, but you made him with an axe, and by your skill he was made into an Elohim? And behold, he has already dried up with his fatness has perished. He fell from the height of the earth he came from the greatness to smallness, and the appearance of his face wasted away, and he himself was burned up by the fire, and he became ashes and is no more. And you say, let me make another, and tomorrow he will make my food for me? But... In uh, perishing, he left himself no strength for his own destruction. Chapter 7 This I say, fire is more venerable in formation, for even the unsubtle things are subdued in it, and it mocks that which per perishes easily by means of its burning. But neither is it venerable, for it is subject to the waters, but rather the waters are more venerable than fire, because they overcome fire, and sweeten the earth with fruits. But I will not call them Elohim either, for the water uh, subsides under the earth and are subject to it. But I will not call it an Elohim either, for it is dried by the sun and subordinated to man for his work, more venerable among the Elohim, I say is the sun, for with its rays it illuminates the whole universe and the various airs. Nor will I place among the Elohim the one who obscures his course by means of the moon and the clouds. Nor again shall I call the moon or the stars Elohim, because they too at times during the night their light is dim. Listen, Terak, my father, I shall seek before you the Yah who created all the Elohim supposed by us to exist. For who is it, or which one is it, 
who made the heavens crimson and the sun golden, who has given light to the moon and the stars with it, who has dried the earth in the midst of many waters, Mayim, who set you yourself among the things, and who has sought me out in the perplexity of my thoughts. Only Yahweh will revive himself by himself to us. Chapter 8 And it came to pass, as I was thinking these things, like these with regard to my father Terok in the court of my house, the voice of the Mighty One, the Gadol Echad, came down from the Shamayim in a stream of fire, saying and calling Avram, Avram. And I said, Hineni, here I am. And he said, You are searching of Yahweh Elohim, the Creator, in the understanding of your heart. I am he. Go out from Terak, your father, and go out of the house, that you too may not be slain in the sin of your father's iniquity, his house. And it came to pass, as I went out, I was not yet outside the entrance of the court, that the sounds of great thunder came and burned him and his house and everything in his house down to the ground. Forty cubits. Chapter 9 Then a voice came speaking to me twice, Avram, Avram. And I said, Hineni, here I am. And he said, Behold, it is I. Fear not for Ashrei. I am before the world, Eretz, and the mighty, the Elohim who created previously, before the light of the age. I am the protector for you, and I am your helper. Go get me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old she-goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a pigeon, and make me a pure sacrifice. And in this sacrifice, atonement, I will place the ages to come. I will announce to you guarded things, and you will see great things which you have not seen, because you desire to search for me, and I called you my Yaqid, beloved. But for forty days abstain from every kind of food cooked by fire, and from drinking of wine, and from anointing yourself with oil, and then you shall set out for me the sacrifice, which I have commanded you, in the place which I will show you on a high mountain. And there I will show you the things which were made by the ages and by my word and affirmed, created and renewed. 
I will announce to you in them what will come upon those who have done evil and just things in the race of man. Chapter 10 And it came to pass, when I heard the voice, pronouncing such words to me that I looked this way and that way, and behold, there was no breath of man, and my ruach was amazed, and my soul fled from me, and I became like a stone, and fell face down upon the earth, for there was no longer strength in me to stand up on the earth. And while I was still face down on the ground, I heard the voice speaking, Go, Yaoel, of the same name, through the meditation of my ineffable name, <laughs> consecrate this man for me, and strengthen him against his trembling. The angel, the Melachim, he sent to me in the likeness of a man, came and took me by my right hand and stood me on my feet. And he said to me, Stand up, Avraham, friend of Yah, who has loved you? Let not trembling enfold you, for lo, I am sent to you to strengthen you and to Kodesh you in the name of Yahuwah, creator of heavenly Shamaim and Eretz, earthly things, who has loved you. Be bold and hasten to him. I am Yehoel, and I was called so by him who causes those who with me on the seventh expanse on the firmament to shake a power through the medium of his ineffable perfect name in me. I am the one, the Echad, who was has been charged according to his commandment, his mitzvot, to restrain the threats of the living creatures of the Kerevim against one another. And I teach those who carry the song through the medium of man's night of the seventh hour. I am appointed to hold the Leviathans, because through me is subjugated the attack and menace of every reptile. I am ordered to loosen Sheol, and to destroy those who wandered at the dead. I am the one who ordered your father's house to be burned with him, for he honored the dead. I am sent to you now to Kodesh you and the land which he whom you have called the Eternal One has prepared for you. For your sake I have indicated the way of the land. Stand up, Avram. Go boldly. Be very joyful and rejoice. And I also rejoice with you, for a venerable honor has been prepared for you by Elion, the eternal Echad, the eternal one. Go, complete the sacrifice of the command. 
Behold, I am assigned to be with you and with the generations which is predestined to be born from you. And with me, Ma Ke'el blesses you forever. Be bold. Go. Chapter 11 And I stood up and saw him who had taken my right hand and set me on my feet. The appearance of his body was like sapphire, and the aspect of his face was like that of chrysolite, and the hair of his head like snow. And a kidaris was on his head. Its look, that of the rainbow, and the clothing of his garment was purple and a golden staff was in his right hand. And he said to me, Avram, and I said, Hineni, here is your servant. And he said, Let my appearance not frighten you, nor my speech trouble your soul. Come with me and I will go with you visible until the sacrifice, but after the sacrifice invisible forever. Be bold and go. Chapter 12 And we went, the two of us alone together, forty days and nights. And I ate no lechem, bread, and drank no water, mayam, because my food was to see the angel who was with me, and his discourse with me was my drink. And we came to the mountain of Yah, glorious Horev, and I said to the angel, singer of the eternal one, behold, I have no sacrifice with me, nor do I know a place for the altar on the mountain. So how shall I make a sacrifice? And he said, look behind you. And I looked behind me, and behold, all the prescribed sacrifices were following us. The calf, the she-goat, the ram, the turtle-dove, and the pigeon. And the angel said to me, Avram. And I said, Hanani, here I am. And he said to me, Slaughter all these and divide the animals exactly into halves. But do not cut the birds apart and give them to the men whom I will show you standing beside you. For they are the altar on the mountain to offer sacrifice to the Eternal One. The turtle dove and the pigeon you will give to me, for I will ascend on the wings of the birds to show you what is in the heavens, the Shamaim, on the earth, Eretz, and in the sea, Mayim, in the abysses, and in the lower depths in the Garden of Edan, and in its rivers, in the fullness of the all of the universe, and you will see its circles in all. Chapter 13 And I did everything according to the angel's command, 
And I gave the Melech, the angel, who had come to us the divided parts of the animal. And the angel, Yah, O El, took the two birds, and I waited for the evening gift. And an unclean bird flew down on the carcasses, and I drove it away. And the unclean bird spoke to me and said, What are you doing, Avram? On the holy heights where no one eats or drinks, nor is there any them food for men, but these all will be consumed by fire, and they will burn you up. Leave the man who is with you and flee, for if you ascend to the height, they will destroy you. And it came to pass, when I saw the birds speaking, I said, This is the angel. What is this, Adonai? Master. And he said, This is disgrace. This is Azazel. And he said to him, Shame on you, Azazel. For Avram's portion is in heaven, and yours is on earth. For you have selected here, and become enamored of the swelling place of your blemish. Therefore the eternal ruler El Elyon has given you a dwelling on earth. Though you are all evil Ruachoth, you are a liar, and through you are wrath and trials on the generations of men who live impiously. For the eternal El El Yahn did not allow the bodies of the Zadok, the righteous, to be in your hands. So through them, the Zadok, righteous life is affirmed, and the destruction of the wickedness. Shema. Here, counselor, be shamed by me. You have no permission to tempt all the Zadok, the righteousness, depart from this man. You cannot deceive him, because he is the enemy of you, and of those who follow you, and who love you, what you wish. For behold, the garment which is heaven, the Shamaim, was form formerly yours, has been set aside for him, and the corruption which was on him has gone over onto you. Chapter 14 And the Melech, the angel, said to me, Avram, and I said, Hineni, here I am, your servant. And he said, Know from this that the Eternal One, whom you have loved, has chosen you. Be bold and do through your authority whatever I order you against him who reviles justice. Will I not be able to revile him who has scattered about the earth the secrets of heaven and who has taken counsel against the mighty one? Say to him, May you be the firebrand of the furnace and of the earth. Go, Azazel, into the untrodden parts of the earth, for your heritage is over those who are with you, with the stars and with the men born by the clouds whose portions you are. Indeed, they exist 
through your being. Enmity is for you, for you, a pious act. Therefore, th through your own destruction be gone from me. And I said the words as the angel had taught me. And he said, Avram. And I said, Hanani, your servant. The, and the angel said to me, Answer him not. And he spoke to me a second time, and the angel said, Now, whatever he says to you, answer him not, lest his will run up to you. For the eternal El Elyon gave him the gravity and the will. Do not answer him. And I did what the angel had commanded me, and whatever he said to me about the descent, I answered him not. Chapter 15 And it came to pass, when the sun was setting, and behold, a smoke like that of a furnace, and the angels who had the divided portion of the sacrifice ascended from the top of the furnace of smoke. And the angel took me and his right hand and set me on the right wing of the pigeon. And he himself sat on the left wing of the turtle dove. Both of us which were as of neither slaughtered nor divided. And he carried me up to the edge of the fiery flames, and we ascended as if carried by many winds to the Shamayim that is fixed on the expanses. And I saw on the air to whose heights we had ascended a strong light, Ur, was which cannot be described. And behold, in his light a fiery Gehenna was enkindled, and a great crowd in the likeness of men. They all were changing in aspect and shape, running and changing form and prostrating themselves and crying words I did not know. Chapter 16 And I said to the angel, Why is it you now brought me here? For now I can no longer see, because I am weakened, and my Ruach is departing from me. And he said to me, Remain with me, do not fear, he whom you will see coming directly towards us in a great sound of sanctification is the Eternal One who has loved you. You will not look at him himself, but let your Ruach not weaken, for I am with you, strengthening you. Chapter 17 And while he was still speaking, behold the fire coming towards us round about. And a voice was in the fire, like a voice of many waters, like voice of the sea in its uproar. And the angel knelt down with me and gave Barakah, who worshipped, and gave him esteem. And I wanted to fall face down on the earth. 
and the place of highness on which we were standing now stopped on high, now rolled down low. And he said, Only worship, Avram, and recite the song which I taught you. Since there was no ground to which I could fall prostrate, I only bowed down and recited the song which he had taught me. And he said, Recite without ceasing. And I recited, and he himself recited the song. Eternal One, El Elyon, Kodesh El, Yahweh Echad. Self-originating, incorruptible, immaculate, Ya'akid, spotless, immortal, self-perfection, self-devised, without mother, without father, ungenerated, exalted, fiercely, just, lover of men, benevolent, compassionate, bountiful, jealous over me, patient one, most chesed, merciful, Eli, eternal, El Elyon, Kadosh, Shabbat, Shabbat, El HaKavod, El, 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 Yah, El. You are here, my soul has loved, my protector, eternal, fiery, shining light, giving thunder voice, lightning vision, many eyed, receiving the petitions of those who honor you and turning away from the petition of those who restrain you by the restraint of their provocations, Redeemer of those who dwell in the midst of the wicked ones, of whose, those who are dispersed among the just, the righteous of the world, and in the corruptible age, showing forth the age of the Righteous, the just, you make the light shine before the morning light upon your creation from the face to spend the day on the arets, the earth, and in your heavenly dwelling place in the Shamaim there is an inexhaustible light of an ins invincible dawning from the light of your face. Accept my prayer and delight in it and accept also the sacrifice which you yourself made to yourself through me as I searched for you. Receive me favorably, teach me, show me, and make known to your servant what you have promised me. Chapter 18, Kizion Avram. And as I was still reciting the song, the mouth of the fire which was on the firmament was rising up on high, and I heard a voice like the roaring of the sea, and it did not cease from the plentitude of the fire. And as the fire rose up, soaring to the highest point, I saw under the fire a throne of fire, and the many-eyed ones round about reciting the song under the throne for fiery living creatures singing and the appearance of each of them was the same, each having four faces. And this was the aspect of their faces, of a lion, of a man, of an ox, and of an eagle. 
each of these had four heads on its body so that the four living creatures had sixteen faces, and each one had six wings, two on the shoulders, two halfway down, and two at the loins. With the wings which were on their shoulders, they covered their faces. With the wings on their loin, they clothed their feet, and they would stretch the middle wings out and fly, erect. And when they finished singing, they would look at one another and threaten one another. And it came to pass when the angel who was with me saw that they were threatening each other, he left me and went running to them. And he turned the face of each living creature from the face which was opposite it so that they could not see each other's face threatening each other. And he taught them the song of Shalom, peace, which the Eternal One has in himself. And while he was still standing and watching, I saw behind the living creatures a chariot with fiery wheels. Each wheel was full of eyes round about, and above the wheels was the throne which I had seen, and it was covered with fire, and the fire encircled it round about, and an indescribable light surrounded by a fiery crowd, and I heard the voice of the codeshifications, the sanctifications like the voice of a single man. Chapter 19 And a voice came to me out of the midst of the fire, saying, Avram, Avram. And I said, Hineni, here I am. And he said, Look at the expanse which are under the firmament, the rakia, to which you have now been directed, and see that on no single expanse there is there any other but the one whom you have stretched for, or who has loved you. And while he was still speaking, behold, the expanses under me, the heavens, the Shamaim, opened under me. And I saw on the seventh firmament upon which I stood a fire spread out and light and dew and a multitude of angels, Melachim, the the host of the invisible esteem, and up above the living creatures I had seen. I saw no one else there, and I looked from on high where I was standing, downward on the sixth firmament, and I saw there a multitude of spiritual angels, incorporal, carrying out the orders of the fiery angels who were on the eighth firmament, eighth, as I was standing on its elevation. And lo, neither on this firmament was there in any shape any other host, but only the spiritual angels. And the host I saw on the seventh firmament commanded the sixth firmament, and it removed itself. And 
I saw there on the fifth firmament the hosts of stars and their orders and they were commanded to carry out and the elements of the earth obeying them. Chapter 20 And the eternal Elyon said to me, Avram, Avram, and I said, Heneni, here I am. And he said, Look from on high at the stars which are beneath you, and count them for me, and tell me their number. And I said, How can I, for I am a man? And he said to me, As the number of the stars and their power, so shall I place for your seed the nations, and men set apart, Kodesh for me, in my lot, with Azazel. And I said, Eternal El Elyon, let your servant speak before you, and let your fury not rage against your chosen one. Behold, before you led me up, Azazel insulted me. How then, since he is now not before you, did you establish yourself with them? Chapter 21 And he said to me, Look now beneath your feet at the firmament, and understand the creation that was depicted of old on this expanse, and the creatures which are in it, and the age prepares after it, and I looked beneath the firmament at my feet, and I saw the likeness of heaven and the things that were therein. And I saw there the earth erets, and its fruit, and its moving things, and its things that had souls, and its hosts of men, and the impiety of their souls, and their justification of their pursuits, of their works, and the abyss, and its torments, and its lower depths, and the perditions in it. And I saw there in the sea, and its islands, and its cattle, and its fish, and Leviathan, and his realm, and his bed, and his lairs, and the world which lay upon him, and his motions, and the destruction he causes the world. I saw there the rivers, and the upper reaches, and their circles, their circuits. And I saw there the Gen Adon, the Garden of Eden, and its fruit, and the source, and the river flowing from it, and its trees, and the flowering making fruits, and I saw men doing justice in it, their food and their rest. And I saw there a great crowd of men and women and children, half of them on the right side of the portrayal, and half of them on the left side of the portrayal. Chapter 22 And I said, Eternal El Elyon, what is this picture of creation? And he said to me, This is my will with regard to what is in the light, and it is tov, good before my face, Pana. And then afterwards I gave them a command a mitzvot, by my word, and they came into existence. 
whatever I had decreed to exist had already been outlined in this and all the previous created things you have seen stood before me. And I said, O oh, Master Adonai, mighty and eternal, why are the people in this picture on the side and on that side? And he said to me, These are who are the left-siders, are a multitude of tribes who existed previously and after you, some who have been prepared for judgment and order, others for revenge and perdition at the end of the age. Those on the right side of the picture are the people set apart, Kodesh for me, of the people with Azazel, these are the ones I have prepared to be born of you and to be called my people. Look again at the picture, chapter 23. Who is the one who seduced Hava? And what is the fruit of the tree? Question mark. And you will know what will be and how much will be for your seed in the last days, and what you cannot understand. I will make known to you because you have been pleasing before my face, and I will tell you that I have kept in my heart. And I looked at the picture, and my eyes ran to the side of the Garden of Eden. And I saw there a man, very great in height, and terrible in breadth, incomparable in aspect entwined with a woman who was also equal to the man in aspect and in size. And they were standing under a tree of Eden, and the fruit of the tree was like the appearance of a bunch of grapes of the wine. And Behind the tree was standing something like a dragon in form, but having hands and feet like a man's. On his back six wings on the right and six on the left, twelve altogether. And he was holding the grapes of the tree and feeding them to the two I saw entwined with each other. And I said, Who are these two entwined with each other? Or who is this between them, and what is the fruit which they are eating? El Elyon Eternal? Question mark. And he said, This is the world of men. This is Adam, and this is their through their thought on earth. This is Chava, and he who is between them is the impiety of their behavior unto perdition, Azazel himself. And I said, Eternal Mighty One, why then did you adjudge him such dominion that through the works he could ruin mankind on the earth? And he said to me, Hear, Avram, those who desire evil and all whom I have hated, as they commit them, 
over them did I give him dominion, and he was to be loved of them. And I answered and said, Eternal El Elyon, why did it please you to bring it about that evil should be desired in the heart of men? Because you are angered at what was chosen by you. Him who dare, does useless things in your sight. Chapter 24 And he said to me, Close to the nations for your sake and for the sake of those kodeshed set apart after you are the people of your tribe and you will see in the picture what is burdened on them and i will explain to you what i will be and everything that will be in the akaret ha'amim in the last days look now at everything in the picture and i looked and saw there the creatures that had come into being before me and i saw as it were adam and hava who was with him and with them the crafty adversary and Cain, who had been led by the adversary to break the Torah. And I saw the murderer the and I saw the murdered Havael and the perdition brought on him and given through the lawless one. And there I saw fornication and those who desired it and its defilement and their zeal and the fire of the corruption of the lower depths of the earth, and there I saw theft, and those who hastened after it, and the system of their retribution, and the judgment of the great course, where I saw naked men, forehead to forehead, and their shame, and the harm they wrought against their friends and their retribution. And there I saw desire, and in their hand was the head of every kind of lawlessness, and her torment and her dispersal destined to destruction. 25. And I saw there the likeness and of the idol of jealousy. Like a carpenter's figure, such as my father used as make, used to make, and its body was of glittering copper, and before it a man, and he was worshipping it. And there was an altar opposite it, and boys being slaughtered on it in the face of the idol. And I said to him, What is this idol? Or what is the altar? Or who are those being sacrificed? Or who is the sacrifice? Or what is the handsome temple which I see, which is the beauty and the glory that lies beneath your throne? And he said, Shema, hear Avram, this temple which you have seen, the altars and the works of art, this is my idea of the priesthood of the Shem, the name of my esteem, where every 
petition of man will enter and dwell. The ascents of kings and prophets, and whatever sacrifice I decree to be made for me among my coming people, even of your tribe and the body you saw is my anger, because the people who will come to me out of you will make me very angry. And the man you saw slaughtering is he who angers me, and the sacrifice is a killing of those who are for me a testimony of the judgment and the completion at the Bereshi, the beginning of creation. Chapter 26 And I said, Eternal Elion, why did you establish it to be so and to be called on the testimonies of this one? And he said to me, Shema, hear Avram, and understand what I will explain to you and answer whatever I ask you. Why did your father Terak not obey your voice and abandon the devilish worship of idols until he perished and all his house with him? And I said, Eternal Elion, surely because it did not please him to obey me, nor did I follow his works. And he said to me, Shema, hear, Avram, as the counsel of your father is in him, as your counsel is in you, so also the counsel of my will is ready. In days to come you will not know them in advance, nor the future of men. You will see with your own eyes that are your seed. Look at the picture. Chapter 27 And I looked and saw, and behold, the picture swayed. And from its left side a crowd of heathens ran out, and they captured the men, the women, the children, who were on its right side, and some they slaughtered, and others they kept with them. Behold, I saw them running to them by way of four ascents, and they burned the temple with fire, and they plundered the Kodesh things that were in it. And I said, Eternal One, the people you receive from me are being robbed by the hordes of the heathen. They are killing some and holding others as aliens, and they burned the temple with fire, and they are stealing and destroying beautiful things which are in it. Eternal Elion, if this is so, why now have you afflicted my heart, and why will it be so? And he said to me, Listen, Avram, all that you have seen will happen on account of your seed, who will continually provoke me, Esau, because of the body which you saw and the murder in what was depicted in the temple of jealousy and everything you saw will be so. And I said, Eternal Elion, let the evil works done in iniquity, now pass by, but make commandments in them more 
than his just works. For you can do this. And he said to me again, the time of justice will come upon them. At first, through the kodeshness of kings, and I will judge with justice those whom I created earlier to rule from them in them, and from these same ones will come men who will have regard for them, as I announced to you and you saw. Chapter 28 And I answered and said, Eternal Elion, you who are sanctified, Kodesh, by your power, be full of chesed, mercy, in my petition, since for this you informed me and showed me. Since you have brought me up onto your height, therefore inform me, your beloved, about whatever I ask. Will what I saw be there lot for long? And he showed me a multitude of his people, and he said to me, For this reason it is through the four ascents you see that my anger will be because of them, and in them will be retribution for their works. And in the fourth ascent is one hundred years, and one hour of the age will also be one hundred years in evil among the heathen, and an hour in their mercy. Even with reproach as among the heathen. Chapter 29 And I said, Eternal Elion, how long a time is an hour of the age? And he said, I decree to keep twelve periods of the impious age among the heathens, and among your seed, and what you have seen will be until the end of time. Count it up, and you will understand. Look down at the picture. And I looked, and I saw a man going out from the left, the heathen side. From the side of the heathen went a, out a man, and women, and children, a great crowd, and they worshipped him. And while I was still looking, those on the right side came out, and some insulted this man, and attacked, and some attacked him, and others worshipped him. And I saw that as they worshipped him, Azazel ran and worshipped and kissed his face. He turned and stood behind him. And I said, Eternal El Elyon, who is this man insulted and beaten by the heathen which Azazel worshipped? And he answered and said, Hear, Shema Avram, the man of whom you saw, insulted and beaten, and again worshipped, is the liberation from the heathen for the people who will be born from you. In the last days, the Akaret Amim, in this twelfth period of the age of my fulfillment, I will set up this man from your tribe, the one whom you have seen from my people. All will imitate him, you, 
are to consider him as one called by me. They are changed in their counsel. And those you saw coming out from the left side of the picture and worshiping him, this means that many of the heathen will trust in him. And those of your seed you saw on the right side, some insulting him, some beating him, and others worshiping him. Many of them shall be offended because of him, and it is he who will test those of your seed who have worshipped him in the fulfillment of the twelfth hour, in the curtailing of the age of impiety, before the age of justice starts to grow. My judgment will come upon the heathen who have acted wickedly through the people of your seed who have been set apart for me. In those days I will bring upon all earthly creation ten plagues through evil and disease and through the groaning of the bitterness of their souls, such will I bring up the generations of those who are on it out of anger and corruption of their creation with which they provoked me. And then from your seed will be left the Zadok, the righteous men in their number, protected by me, who strive in the, the esteem of my name towards the place prepared beforehand for them which you saw deserted in the picture. And they will live a being affirmed by the atonements, the sacrifices, and the gift offerings of justice and truth in the age of justice. And they will rejoice forever in me, and they will destroy those who have destroyed them. They will rebuke those who have rebuked them through their mockery, and they will spit in their faces. Those rebuked by me, when they are to see me rejoicing with my people, for those who rejoice and received and truly return to me. See, Avraham, Avram, what you have seen, Shema, hear what you have heard. Know what you have known. Go to your inheritance, and behold, I am with you forever. Chapter 30 And while he was still speaking, I found myself on earth, and I said, Eternal El Elyon, I am no longer in the the esteem in which I was above, and all that my soul desired to understand in my heart, I do not understand. And he said to me, I will explain to you the things you desire in your heart. For you have sought to know the ten plagues, and when I prepared against the heathen, and I prepared them beforehand in the passing of the twelve hours on earth. Shema, hear what I tell you. It will be thus. The first sorrow from much need, the second fiery conflagrations for the cities, the third destruction by pestilence 
among the cattle, the fourth famine of the world of their generations, the fifth among the rulers' destruction by earthquakes and swords, the sixth increase of hail and snow, the seventh wild beasts will be their grave, the eighth pestilence and hunger will change their destruction, the ninth execution by the sword and flight in distress, the tenth thunder, voices, and destroying earthquakes. Chapter 31 And when I sound the shofar out of the air, and I will send my chosen one, my yakid, having in him one measure of all my power, and he will summon my people, humiliated by the heathen, and I will burn with fire those who mocked them, and ruled over them in this age, and I will deliver those who have covered me with mockery over to the scorn of the coming age because I have prepared them to be food for the fire of Sheol and to be ceaseless soaring in the air of the underworld regions of the uttermost depths to be the constant, er, the contents of a wormy belly. For the makers will see them, see in them justice, and the makers of who you chosen my desire and manifestly kept my commandments, and they will rejoice with merry making over the downfall of men who remain and who followed after the idols and after their murders. For they shall putrefy in the belly of that crafty worm, Azazel, and be burned by fire of Azazel's tongue. For I waited so they might come to me, and they did not deign me to. And they glorified an alien Elohim, and they joined one to whom they had not been allotted, and they abandoned Adonai, who gave them strength. Chapter 32 Therefore hear, Avram, and see, behold, your seventh generation shall go with you, and they will go out into an alien land, and they that enslave them and oppress them as for one hour of the impious age, but of the nation whom they shall serve, I am the judge. And Elion said this too, have you heard, Avram, what I told you, what your tribe will encounter in the last days? Avram, having heard, accepted the words of Yahweh in his heart. Thus concludes the book of Kizion Avram, the revelation, the apocalypse of Avraham from the Et Sefer Publishing Shamaim. Yivaraka.